What up, though, fam? We're back, and we're going to pick up where we left off at with the um, lenses. Now, I pretty much got all of the basic, uh, you know, basic knowledge down for the lenses. Now, you can, you know, you can do some advanced research and really dig into, you know, the optic of the lenses and the quality of the glasses and things like that. But I'm not going to get that involved simply because you just need to know the basics to get you up and going. Uh, remember, I'm trying to keep this as brief as possible to get you up and started right now without any hitches in the back. So with that, um, one, th one more thing I want to talk about before we move on to functions of the camera. And then after functions of the camera, then we're going to actually get some footage and start working with it and edit it and get to all of the good part. But I just want you to understand all of the basics. You have to have a basic understanding of what's going on with the camera and lenses and the whole uh, concept before you can even be able to perceive what's going on when we start shooting and editing. So with that, I want to talk about this here. Carl Zeiss. We're we'll zoom in. And this is the Carl Zeiss diggity dog right here. You see Carl Zeiss planner 85. This is a, uh, T2 and one. It's a prime. You know what I'm saying? It's the big dog. They don't play around. Now let me, um, let me see. Let's see. We'll do this. We're going eBay. And while I'm looking up this particular lens, we're going to do a little bit of research real quick. Carl Zeiss, Zeiss or whatever lens. Now, let me give you just some basics about what this is. I'm going to write for Canon. What this is, let me see, Carl Zeiss 50. What this is, is the primary lens that's used for shooting or making movies so when you want your footage to have true depth to true characteristics of a movie look then you want to invest uh oh oh look at this one ah look at that i'm shopping while i'm talking to y'all you want to invest in a carl zeiss lens um now I want you to do some research here. What I want you to do, I want you to log into YouTube and I want you to do your own research so that you can compare footage with your own neck, your own naked eyes and you don't have to go through a third party, you know, looking through, um, you know, through the recording screen because you're not going to really get the clarity, you know, or, or the crispiness, you know, as you would if you looked at it directly. But you will find some good footage uh, with the Zeiss lens. Now, mind you, again, fam, I don't, I don't understand in my heart why a person would go out and buy a Zeiss lens when they really truly don't know how to uh, shoot. They don't understand ISO, aperture, you know, shutter speed, filters, you know, and then they go and spend all this money on a Zeiss lens, and then they just plug the Zeiss lens. You know, you really should educate yourself, basically, because it's a waste of money, and, and even with a Zeiss lens, you're going to get a good image, but if you still don't know how to color correct and light it properly and get the proper exposure, it's still going to come out looking crap, and I can say that uh, a lot of uh, things that I looked at on YouTube um, concerning the Zeiss lens and just looking at some test footage, it really didn't do a, you know, people wasn't recording it good enough for me. This is a good place to check out, fam. Um, check out Lens Test Canon 60D uh, and, uh, you know, the Zeiss 50 versus the Canon 50. And what I can say, and this is one thing that really prompted me to upgrade to get the um, the Canon, you know, the better quality Canon. Not the, not the nifty 50. He's not comparing that to the $100 50 millimeter he's comparing it to the four hundred dollar 50 millimeter but i can say that um it came so close and basically after color correction and after how you tweak your camera and things like that you can really get a good look out of the canon as opposed to if you just didn't have an extra four five hundred dollars to dish out for the zeiss lens but what i can say is that if you got the money Go ahead and get the Zeiss lens because especially with this knowledge that you're going to get behind it, your images is going to look undoubtedly, undoubtedly powerful. And it's just going to, it's just going to have a look. See, I want you guys to look at this whenever you get a chance, whenever you get an opportunity. I can't even, I can't even pause this, y'all. My battery's done died. <laughs> How about that? 
So I just got to keep on yapping because I can't even move the mouse. Anyway, let me switch the batteries as I'm talking. But ain't that funny? Ain't that weird? I'm a weird tutorial host, ain't I? All right, so check it out, fam. Um, you can look at this and you can get a, a general idea on the, the quality difference between both of them. But again, um, when you do color correction and things like that, you can actually come a very, very close to the characteristics of the Zeiss lens. And you'll see what I'm talking about. We're going to pull up some footage and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about once we do color correction and sharpening and, you know, enhancing the image. It's, it's never about, I used to think it was just about, you know, cut on the camera and shoot, but that's, it's not, that's not what it's about. You know what I'm saying? It's about, uh, um, post-production, pre-production, preparation, the whole thing. And we're going to learn all that. So anyway, fam, oh, I got my mouse back moving, as y'all can see. Um, anyway, I just wanted to show you guys this because this Zeiss and the Canon, the same footage, you could pretty much get away with murder. But when it comes to using the Zeiss lens as opposed to any other type of lens, you're going to always get that, that film feel and a lot of um, producers that shoot music videos today they will prefer to use the Zeiss lens over any other type of lens because of the characteristics the the depth the sharpness and the true color capture that it captures just it's just a pristine glass it's the best glass that you is out there that you can buy and it's going to come as close to that film look that you're looking for as humanly possible and i feel i want to talk to you about this because i feel that you know you should know anybody that want to know well what's the best lens you can buy what's the weakest lens you can buy what's the best well this is considered as of now one of the best i'm sure it's other ones out there but this this here has the record for being one of the best lens out there. And I have seen some footage myself with my own eyes, and it was absolutely breathtaking. I'm talking about it's like you was just watching TV. It's just, it's real cool. So I'll come back later on, and I'll show you some images. Matter of fact, let me pause it, and let me do a little bit of research. And I, there was some, I think I saved some footage. Let me show you some footage that the Canon shot with a Zeiss lens. And you should be blown away if I can find it. Let me pause and try to find it real quick. Okay, fam, I, I pulled up a few clips I want y'all to check out, and this is um, uh, some Canons that's using some Zeiss lenses, and um, some of these I don't think is really good comparisons, but I'll just show you anyway. But uh, again, uh, you, you have to fully see the full potential of the Zeiss lens. Actually, if you look at it side by side, and that's, to be honest, that's if they really truly are I'm testing with uh, Zeiss lenses, but with the naked eye, and I'm an artist, and I can see details and things that the natural per you know, the average person can't see. I, you know, I really tune in. You know, I, I mean, I'm serious. You know, and uh, you know, comparing these two here, I, for example, I look at different parts to compare images. For example, look at follow my mouse. I, this little square right here, I would tune in to say, for instance, something like this line with this little curve. And these are the type of details that I pay attention to. So with this line and this little curve, I go over here and then compare it with this line and curve. And looking at both of them with the naked eye, and keep in mind, um, we are digital... I mean, we are visual, um, and, you know, we're more <clears throat> visually and, uh, you know, audio. We pay much more attention than the average person because this is what we do for a living. But just, you know, if, if they actually use a Carl Zeiss lens for these two comparisons, then, um, you know, paying $700, $800 for this lens as opposed to paying $400 for this lens then you're probably better off getting this lens. You see where I'm coming from, fam? But um, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be really honest, brutally honest. Uh, I just don't feel that some people that's using this Zeiss lens is not using it. Um, they're, they're not, you know, as professional as they, you know what I mean, as they could be. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up, um, let me see. Uh, let me pull up. 
playlist here. Student tutorials. We'll pull this up and I got I uh, selected a few videos. Now here now here's a good one. And this was used with a Canon 5D Mark III. And um this here, you can probably go check this out later on when you when you can. The Canon 5D Mark III ISO test. And I primarily pulled this up, not necessarily for the Canon D Mark III, um, because you can get the same image with a Mark II, but primarily because they're using a Zeiss lens on that particular camera. Now, I'm going to show you, and remember, we're talking about characteristics of a lens. Remember that, all right? And although you can get the sim very similar looks, it's just another type of characteristics that you simply cannot capture with another lens as opposed to the type of characteristics that the Zeiss lens can give you. So <clears throat> I'm going to try my best to pull up. I'm going to pull up some bad footage that people shot, then I'm going to pull up some good footage. In one particular case, this here is good footage. We're just going to, let me see if I can just scroll to the part where I want you to see. Yeah. We go here and we see, okay, so we're, we're taking note of a few things, fam, and, and I know I'm kind of jumping ahead, but it's okay because you're going to learn everything. But what we're doing as far as jumping ahead is we'll take note to this. You know that this is a, a, a fluorescent kind of light here, and um, uh, it's kind of, you know, it's a big square. It's not like a, a beaming bulb. It's a big square, so it covers a specific amount of of area and then you'll notice that they have it kind of like shooting on her side and then they got this bounced now what happens is when it hit here it's going to hit hard and you might see during, around the hairline you'll see that that's hard white but then it bounces then that's going to bounce back even softer now it's already soft to begin with but then it's going to bounce even softer and all of these things is very 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 important when it comes to shooting fam remember you want everything to look natural. The entire idea is for you to have everything nice and bright and natural. You want the camera to capture nice, bright, and natural. So the key thing is when you light things up, if you can try to keep in mind, and I know I'm jumping ahead, I'm, jump, I'm jumping into lighting, but just so you can grasp these ideas so that you can get the best possible image into your camera, it's just good to understand what we're trying to do. Always remember, when you, when you approach your situation, just try to remember, have enough light going inside the camera and make the light as natural as possible. So basically, you don't want it to be obvious that you're using light, if, for lack of better words. Now, let me give you an example. You see, she's well lit. The average person don't see her as well lit. The average person just see her as clear. But we know that she's lit. Now, obviously, because they're using these studio lights, apparently we see that she have not an orange hue, but kind of like a, a daylight hue or a fluorescent uh, blue view, you know, kind of white, more white or blue, so to speak, as opposed to um, tungsten light, which is more on the oranger side or, or on the warmer side. We looking at more of a cooler, cooler light. So, um we can assume that they're using a light similar to this if not one of these is shining on her but the idea is that you don't see any harsh shadows and that's what the pretty much the naked eye really see the naked eye when we look at things we we don't really see light shining on a particular subject we just see we just see the subject so that's the whole idea behind lighting, and you know we we'll get more into detail about it later. But that's the idea behind lighting. So anyway, I have I totally forgot why I brought up this subject, but it'll come back to me <laughs> later in a few seconds. But anyway, um, I just wanted to um, um, show the lighting setup. Um, the we see that these are just basic walls, and they look like a harsh light, or or should I say maybe a really strong light is illuminating these back boards back here. And that's going to add to the look. So the primary thing, what we're trying to do right now, again, and we can kind of see from a different angle what's going on here. We see that this light is shining on that, illuminating primarily the left side of her. And then we have a bounce light that's filling in the right side of her. Okay, so we'll play it. 
and uh, we're not going to really see nothing until they actually show the actual footage. But I'm going to, now we see that they're getting ready to use the big dog Zeiss lens. And they have it on the thing. And obviously, and here's a good thing too, we can kind of pay attention to. You know they're, they're obviously using some Canon cameras even shooting this documentary, or should I say this background um, footage. And obviously they're probably not using the Zeiss lens. They're probably using the Canon, you know, maybe an L or, ba or basic Canon lens. But we can see kind of the difference how... Uh, you can kind of tell that, you know, they're just pointing and shooting in this case. But watch what happens when they show the actual footage of what they see. Now, you see the difference. You see this. This actually looks like a real music video. The characteristics, and that's what I'm saying. That's what I mean by the characteristics of it. Just give it a much more richer, a much more depth look to it. Uh, and we do keep in mind that it is a Mark III, and they do have a, a few uh, um, megapixels more than the um, Canon 5D Mark II, but not notable. It's not notable to the naked eye. So we really, we're not necessarily talking about megapixels at, at this point. We're really talking about the quality of that Zeiss lens. Something else I want you guys to take note. Obviously and apparently they did some color correction. Now that's all fine and dandy. So you see that the colors is popping and things like that. But what I want you to take note is that when we back up here, when we back up here, everything kind of look washed, right? Now this is a straight point and shoot, no color correction. So that's the reason why we don't see no colors popping. That's the reason why we see kind of like a lot of grays and really no, really no true solid blacks, right? Now watch when we forward here to her singing. And they might have did some subtle color correction with that. Um, okay, so we see soft, you know, soft grays and things like that. But now all of a sudden we see kind of rich blacks. You see how that's completely black? You see how you can see the, oh, that's a black leather. You know what I'm saying? You can almost kind of see, well, that look black. It could be black, but those almost kind of just look like brown leopard designs. And you can see that the pants is beige. You know, you can actually see what those colors are supposed to be. And you also notice that, remember I was telling you about that light hitting on the side of her? Well, notice how it's hitting, and, but notice how all of the shadows is extra dark. You see that? You notice how it's black? And that's the thing that a lot of people is missing when they shoot in video. They don't have those colors popping. They don't have that high contrast, that high dynamic range when it comes to color. And of course, the Zeiss lens is optimized to pick up those, those little nuances so that when you color correct, you can really pull the true colors, like the real orange, what really the truly the naked eye sees. See, this is what the neck, this is very close to what the naked eye sees. You see what I'm saying? The, you see how, notice how that's rich, rich yellow. You see how it's gradient orange, and then it's like gradient hot orange red, and then it goes down to brown, and then it goes down to black. All of that is very, very important, and I just want you to see how those colors pop. Now, you can't just get these just by pointing and shooting. You have to have a really good lens, and then you have to have an understand. You have to set your camera a certain way, and we're going to move on to our next tutorial, and we're going to talk about camera features and functions, and then you're going to have to have an understanding about color and um, color correction and color grading. And those are the secrets, those are the professional secrets that the amateurs, that's gonna separate you from the amateurs, all right? So we're gonna move on and we're gonna end it here, but I really wanted to drive the point home. I'm gonna let it play a little bit more. Notice that, look at that, look at that. Look look how how uh, good that looks. I mean, <clears throat> it, look, it have a, it, I don't know how to explain it. It just have a much more of a film look as opposed to, um, you know, any of the cheaper lenses like a, you know, maybe a Samsung. Now, although you can come, you can, you can color correct it and add sharpening and things like that to the, to the image that can really make it look good. But you don't have to work so, so hard to get that image when you're using a Zeiss lens. So that's the whole idea, fam. So I just really wanted to bring that out. I wanted to play it for you, and I wanted to so that you can at least understand and know, like, okay, one day either I'm going to buy me a Zeiss lens, I'm going to buy me a Zeiss set, 
for 20 G's or I'm going to rent it. You know what I'm saying? So you have the option. And I just want to make sure that you know that. You know what I'm saying? That's a professional thing. That's a, This is advanced knowledge. This is a professional thing to know. So when you do get around the big dogs and you get the questioning and you get the talking and working your thing around in the, in the game, you'll have that other type of knowledge that the average person don't know. So if you ask a person what's a Zeiss lens and they don't know, you'll know the level of um, knowledge where they are. You understand what I'm saying? Because once you know what a Zeiss lens is, you know what you know, you know the difference between lenses and its capabilities and its functions and features and things like that. And oh, this is good too. Again, I got a Canon 5D Mark II and they got a Mark III. And I did all my research before I went on and purchased the um, 5D. Uh, me in particular, I need a 5D for, you know, the variety of different things that I'm going to be doing and the type of different things that I do do. Uh, that didn't sound too right that I do do, <laughs> but um, you guys get the uh, you, you guys get the point. And then I was looking at the, uh, you know, the ISO and you see here, they, this has 6400 ISO, that's a 6400 ISO, that's a Mark II, that's a Mark III. And you'll notice that I got more more range here. And you notice here it's kind of washed out. So, you know, I took both of those things into consideration. I was like, you know, I'll be okay with the 5D. I could save $1,000 and use it towards, you know, some some more lighting, some softbox lighting, this, that, and the other. Anyway, fam, <clears throat> I just wanted to bring that home to your attention so that you can at least have some ideas uh, at what's going on so that you can understand the difference with the qualities and you know okay I, I have a little bit better understanding of lenses I have respected I appreciate it and now you have an idea when you go shopping for your lenses you 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 now have a better understanding of what you're looking for what you might want to buy and the reasons why you want to buy it alright so we're gonna sign out we're gonna move on and we're gonna talk about camera features and functions because you gotta understand what ISO mean you gotta understand what aperture is and what it does and you got to understand what shutter speed is what that does and how all these things can benefit you in various d certain situations you may you know if you're in the situation for example if you in a at a wedding and everything is low you don't have enough light then you got to be able to know how to adjust your ISO how to adjust your aperture and how you might want to adjust your shutter speed to let more light in to get the best possible image that you can that you can get but it's understanding the camera that helps you to do that then we're going to move after that after you guys get familiar with the camera functions and features which is going to be with any camera just not just a Canon but it's going to be any camera you may have a Canon I mean you might have a Nikon you might have a Sony you might have an iPhone but just understanding what these different things um, is used for can help you to be shoot better quality pictures photos and video significantly so with that we're going to go ahead and sign out make sure you guys uh, fall back and take the test and until the next time i'll see you in a minute and i'll see you when i spin it